Spartan Locke. I have spent enough years with Oni to know the truth. Once this is over, after all we have done, they will order you to kill us both. So hello and welcome back to GRTV's Game of the Year Countdown. Yeah. Uh, we're getting closer and closer to top place. Right now we're taking a look at the third best game of the year according to us here at GRTV. Yeah. Bronze medal winner. Yes. Yeah. And, uh, well, third place it is. <gasps> Halo 5 Guardians. Yeah, the second attempt at taking up the mantle from Bungie, developer 343 Indu Industries, uh, after a, I wouldn't say bland, but maybe a slightly disappointing Halo 4 for many, yeah. uh, like mainly due to the, to the multiplayer uh, being like a, a bit low on content and on like the gameplay hooks and stuff. They really nailed it this time around. Yeah. Halo 5 Guardians. Now, to help us talk about uh, this game, we have, through the magical powers of the internet, brought in Mike Holmes, Editor-in-Chief of Game Director UK. Uh, oh. Quickly, your thoughts. Quickly. Um, I thoroughly enjoyed my time with Halo 5. Um, like you both said, uh, Halo 4 was lacking in certain areas. The, the multiplayer is just a little bit too convoluted for my tastes, and they really nailed it with Halo 5. Well, we've got colleagues on the uh, on the on the staff. I know uh, Jonas in at Game Reactor Sweden is a huge fan of the campaign, and whilst mm. I liked it too, um, for me it was the multiplayer that really really set it apart from everything else this year and made it our third our third placed game of the year. Yeah, well, I mean uh, the 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 pressure was on to actually deliver yeah, very much uh, so. not uh, not just a functional product but a very polished one because uh, following the debacle that was the Master Chief Collection, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I don't even know. I haven't even heard. Have they completely fixed that? Yet? Uh, no, and yes. Uh, lately, they uh, they had to cancel the large tournament that was supposed to take place with the Master Chief Collection and cancel that and but still go ahead with the Halo 5 tournament. So obviously there are like very, very integrated server issues going on with that game that just didn't work when it came out. So it was practically in a place where it was unfixable. And I think we need to touch upon the campaign because the campaign has created like a very mixed stir among critics in our business. And especially due to the fact that the commercial material and the first preview rounds of the game where 343 Industries had to pitch what was happening. There was, they pitched the sort of conflict between Spartan Locke and Master Chief, that Locke and Master Chief was heading towards this, this duel, this duel of the masters. Uh, but then again, that's not really what happened. And a lot of people were very disappointed that there isn't more like there is, yeah, there isn't more conflict in the game where you, you know, Spartan Locke is chasing down Master Chief for reasons we don't want to uh, completely spoil here on, here on the show. But uh, to a lot of hardcore Halo fans out there, uh, it was very disappointing. Uh, there's not enough character exposition. The plot is like very light in terms of what what's actually being narrated. I just, as a, like a semi-pro Halo player, I really enjoyed it because as a blockbuster movie. It just works really well. It's very well paced, and the, each mission you feel like you're going somewhere. Either I do agree that there is not enough Master Chief content in there. There's like, I think Mike, maybe you can clarify this. I think there's like eleven or twelve missions, and three of them is Master Chief or something like that. It's a fairly, it's a pretty close split, I think, between the two. All oh, right, yeah, teams. Yeah, yeah. Maybe there's maybe there's slightly more Spartan locks. Yeah, yeah. But I just thought, to me, it was. It just did what it set out to do very well. Mine, while may not providing the depth that a lot of hardcore fans was, ask, was asking for, for me at least, it just delivered that fun, over-the-top uh, sci-fi space action that I really wanted from it. Yeah. It's epic all the way through. Yeah. So, I mean, I, I personally didn't play that much of the story. However, <laughs> I did uh, play a sizable amount of the multiplayer content yeah. and yeah, I really enjoyed it. Yeah. The, the way that they have the, the abilities on the suit now. Yeah, the Spartan abilities, yeah. Uh, and uh, just smooth 60 frames per second. It's true, it's true, it's true. And uh, between the, the normal smaller modes and maps, 
and then going on to the like the war zones. Yeah, it does feel very it's good. Very varied and and very big in scope and in content. Yeah, the only thing that the the, the thing that was fun for me at least was that um, while Microsoft and Bungie back with in Halo One, Two, Three, and Reach, they to position sort of these Spartans as superheroes or super soldiers at least, but. As Master Chief in Halo 1, 2, and 3, you never really felt super because he's sort of, when you get in the more busy fights, he's sort of squishy. I mean, the shields doesn't hold up as well, and he doesn't, you know, he's not very good in melee, but with these Spartan abilities, you finally felt really powerful when you were doing, you know, uh, the, the s slams on the ground and the, the dodges around the place and the double jumps. It really, you know, you felt like the super soldier. You were always meant to be that power fantasy, I thought these abilities really fulfilled. But I don't know what do you, what you think, Mike. Do you, do you, there's a lot of players out there who don't like the Spartan abilities. The, the Halos, the Spartan abilities in Halo have been device, divisive ever since Halo Reach. Mm. And you could argue that the, the purity of the game, that was, that was the point where it split off. And that was where you had jetpacks and um, and, and various other with sprint. I think that was the first time that we had hmm. sprint in Halo. Uh, so if you go back to play Halo Three now, it does feel very slow. But um, what I think that they've done incredibly well with Halo Five is I think that they've balanced it perfectly. And whereas with Halo Four, for example, going back to that again, um, there was a, a a long winding process of unlocks and kind of. Call of Duty esque builds and perks, and, and you could do a variety of different things with a, with a loadout, which was fine, but it obviously didn't resonate with the Halo community because they wanted a Halo game. They didn't want Call of Duty in space with Master Chief, you know. So mm. it kind of lost its identity, and I think that was perhaps perhaps the big problem. The, it looked great. It was one of the best looking Xbox 360 games. Mm. The maps, the map design was really decent. The moment-to-moment -moment gameplay was largely Halo-esque, but there was kind of there was something bubbling under the surface in the meta game that didn't fit right, and it left some players feeling a little bit uh, unsatisfied over time. With Halo Five, everybody goes to battle with the same loadout with the same abilities and with the same chances and that in itself takes us back all the way back to Halo 3 and that for me is why Halo 5 is the best m best multiplayer that we've seen in that series I mean I loved Reach don't get me wrong I absolutely adored Reach but 3 was the one and I think it's a return to form on that scale that we've seen and you're right the less we talk about the Master Chief collection, the better. Very much um, so. Because I mean that was still a great that was a great collection of story campaigns and the multiplayer pretty much works most of the time now. Um, but that was a disaster of epic proportions and they really needed to, to knock this one out of the park to kind of erase that memory or at least kind of get forgiveness from their community. And also uh, like they're they're they they are as I said again, the, the sort of the heritage of the Halo series is a very important one to a large a core base of fans. And in terms of 343 being put together as a studio by Microsoft in order to take on this, this massive job of carrying on while Bungie says, well, there's no more for us to tell here. We're done with Halo. Microsoft had to convince all the fans that there is more stories to tell. And with Halo 4 first, like being a very interesting and personal campaign for Master Chief, but having the bland multiplayer and then the debacle with not nailing the multiplayer with Master Chief Collection, they sort of had a lot of neg negative energy around them. So I just I, I, I just feel like uh, that Halo 5 Guardians is a, is a is a as much as an important game for 343, mostly as it is to its fans, that if this didn't pan out right, then they would be in really deep trouble with like convincing fans that Halo had a place in 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 the hearts and minds of gamers out there when it was not Bungie go behind the wheel. Mm. So I think that that this is at least good. Uh, I mean, as again, as we said again, the campaign sparked a lot of controversy, very divisive on, on both sides of the fence. But multiplayer being solid 
for like the first time in Halo in years, like uh, between yeah, 4 and Master Chief Collection, is so important for 343 that they can pull it off. Because Halo 6, probably a few years out, but that closes out the trilogy that they are behind. Then the series future is entirely up in the air. Now we, we're going to get Halo Wars 2, of course, yep. but they're not, they're not developing it. So 343, what, if, if this hadn't gone as smooth as it had, we would, they would, Microsoft would be in very deep trouble yeah. in what to do with it. But at least, like, like, gladly, it turned out to be just the balance we were looking for. Now, Mike, being a, a like a, a Halo player ever since the beginning of the series, saying that Halo 5 is the best multiplayer the series has seen, that is the greatest compliment you could give to the game, I think. Yeah. And, I mean, as uh, we've been saying some negative stuff as well because mm. I mean we're trying to be balanced, but yeah. obviously it worked out quite well. It's here on yeah. at number three on our game of the year for 2015, which has been an epic game uh, gaming year. Mm -hmm. But uh, final thoughts before we uh, say goodbye. If 343 makes Halo 6 and it nails the campaign in terms of its fans and brings on like the good like fundamentals that they've created with Halo 5, then we're looking at something really special. I feel like the misstep that they, the misstep with Halo 5 was I think they tried a little bit too hard. I really like the story um, and I'm, I'm really interested to see how they wrap things up. But the, the kind of the four player, the four character structure on each team, the fire team thing, it felt like they were trying to formalize the way that people have been playing Halo in the past with the four-player co-op, and I feel like they missed they missed it slightly, which was why for me the story kind of dragged it down from being a potential ten to a nine. However, I think you're right. I think there is potential there for them to really take it to the next level, but. At the same time, I want to say that I don't think, apart from the first Halo, I don't think any of the campaigns have been brilliant. I mean, Halo Reach was really good. Halo very Reach is a, is, a, is a great campaign, I think. And But Halo 3 was a bit short, and there were some, some sections that weren't as enjoyable as others, you know, some convoluted sections. Halo 2 was a mess. Halo 4 was just a bit bland mm. you know they managed to introduce a whole load of new stuff but it, it, I mean I have trouble thinking back and I mean I've completed it twice and I can't remember everything that happens so it, it, it doesn't have that kind of same classic feel to it but they haven't done a, a an amazing campaign since the first game and they probably never will do you know it's for me the the, the success of Halo rests almost entirely on the ability, on the on the tail that is created by the multiplayer and the retention of players that goes on beyond the six or ten or twelve hours of the campaign. And whilst I found the campaign largely enjoyable and um, you know an improvement over Halo Four. It didn't matter to me. What mattered to me as a, as a long-time Halo fan was that they nailed the multiplayer, and they absolutely did that. They delivered across the board. The map design is great. The, the balance is perfect. They've stripped away a load of the bollocks that they introduced with Halo 4, and they've gone for a leaner, purer experience. And that, for me, is why Halo 5 is in third place. Yeah. There you have it. Uh top three game of the year mm. Halo 5 Guardians make sure to tune in tomorrow where we reveal what game is in second place until then see you later